Hey everybody, thank you for joining our live stream today. We started a little bit earlier today, but thank you for joining right on time. Service will start at 9.30 promptly. So take this little bit of extra time that you have to share with somebody. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, text the link to somebody so that they can join in worship with us because it's anniversary Sunday and it's about to be on and popping. We got worship, we got the word. So come on in, get yourself relaxed and get ready to get into New Covenant Church of Philadelphia Sunday morning live stream, AKA the outpouring.
Hey everybody, thank you for joining our live stream today. We started a little bit earlier today, but thank you for joining right on time. Service will start at 9.30 promptly. So take this little bit of extra time that you have to share with somebody. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, text the link to somebody so that they can join in worship with us because it's anniversary Sunday and it's about to be on and popping. We got worship, we got the word. So come on in, get yourself relaxed and get ready to get into New Covenant Church of Philadelphia Sunday morning live stream, AKA the outpouring. you're wearing, the grave clothes that bind you, the drug clothes that bind you, the fornication clothes that bind you, 
The adultery clothes that bind you. The backbiting clothes that bind you. All the sins and, and, and the infirmities and, the, and all the, the abominations that you put your hand in. God sees all those grave clothes and he says, I won't take them off. I want you to hear the gospel today so that you can receive the power. This is my husband, Eric Blackwell. I'm Little Blackwell. And I'm Gabrielle Blackwell. And we're the Blackwell family. You know, we met in the youth ministry under Reverend Andrew Grant. Ah, sounds weird. We called him Drew, though. Yeah, and under Drew, we had lots of fun going to Friday Night Lives. We had our foundations of our faith that we learned in Friday nights and on Sunday services. A lot of the friends that we made in youth ministry are still our friends today and our children have great relationships with them. We're the youth leaders of the Covenant Church of Philadelphia. We have services every Sunday at 4.30 p.m. Our services are via Zoom. You can register at nccop.church slash children. Remember to connect to us on social media. You can follow us on Instagram at nccop underscore, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Welcome to New Covenant Church of Philadelphia. And thank you for joining us for the Sunday worship. Millions didn't make it, but we're one of the ones who did. Happy 38th anniversary to the New Covenant Church of Philadelphia. Hey everyone. You might have seen my video on Facebook or on Instagram letting you know that we're in the middle of a giveaway for our anniversary month. Yeah, that's right, we're celebrating all month long and we wanna make sure that you are part of the fun. So here's what you gotta do. Get out your phone and record a video. In that video, we want you to talk about a memory that you have here at New Covenant, or maybe it's something that we do annually or monthly that you participate in and you just wanna talk about it for a second. 
That video, we want you to post it on either Facebook or Instagram and tag our page. For those of you that don't know, our Instagram is at NCCOP underscore, don't forget that underscore, and you can tag us as well on Facebook. We're gonna be selecting three people at random who have submitted videos to win one of our three prizes. What are the prizes you ask? Well, you're just gonna have to stay tuned and make sure you're following us on Facebook or Instagram because we might drop them sometime this week. Our three winners will also have the opportunity to have their video featured during our Sunday morning live stream. We're excited to hear your memories and your stories of what God has done for you in the 38 years of this ministry. Well, I'ma drop out your way and we're gonna go back to the announcement. So until next time, see ya. Virtual worship services for children, junior high, and youth are every Sunday following the live stream. If your child was registered for the ministry prior to July 1st, then please visit nccop.church to register. The Zoom credentials will only be sent to those who are registered. We'll see you after service. Join us for prayer Monday through Friday and stay on the call or join the call at 1 o'clock p.m. to receive personal ministry on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Join the overflow for an extended time of praise, worship, and prayer. Small Doses of Healing, an art therapy-based workshop, will take place this Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. For more information, please visit nccop.church. Two Fish and Five Loaves Food Distribution is every Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m. If you or someone you know could benefit from the food, then join us at 7500 Germantown Avenue, Philadelphia, PA, 19119. Cars begin arriving early and food is distributed on a first-come, first-served basis. If you would like to volunteer with the ministry, visit nccop.church slash two fish five loaves. For more information on these and other announcements, visit nccop.church. Good morning, everybody, and happy 38th anniversary to all of the members of the New Covenant Church of Philadelphia. I am so excited to be here with you today. Listen, if we were here in the sanctuary, you already know I would be up here getting ready to do a roll call with you. But since we're virtual this year, that doesn't mean that the party is going to stop. So here's what I need you to do. Make sure that you're ready to get your fingers typing. When you hear your year called out, I I want you to respond to me. All right, are you ready? Okay, if you are one of the pioneers that started out this journey with us in 1982 on that cold and rainy November day, listen, I want you to say, hey, I'm here. Give me some hands up. Give me some hands lifted. Let me know that you're in the place today. Listen, if you join within the first year from 1982 to 1983, then it's for you. Get in there. Let me know that you're here with us. All right, 83 to 84, are you in the house? Come on, get in that chat room. Let me know that you're here. 1984 to 1985, so glad that God kept you alive. Come on, let me know that you're here. Now, if you join from 1986 to 1990, God was still doing a work. Get in there, let me know. Now, 1991, 1997, if you came before this century was completed and you worshiped with the concrete floors, come on, lift your hands up. Let me know that you're in the place. Now, if you came from 1997 to 2000, sanctuary was completed, great place of worship, then this is for you. Okay, now are you ready? If you came, from 2000 to 2010, it's your time, it's your time. God is still divine. Okay, awesome. Now, if you join this awesome church from 2010 to 2020, this year, maybe you're one of our new virtual members, then it's your time. Make sure you get in there and let us know. We wanna celebrate with you. 38 years of God's goodness and his mercy. Great is his faithfulness toward us. We give God the highest praise and say hallelujah for you being in this house. Listen, you might be celebrating at home, but if you count the New Covenant Church of Philadelphia your church home, then this celebration is for you. God bless you until I see you again. Keep the faith.
Lord. All ye people, praise ye the Lord. For all the years that we have been here, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord.
and in our personal lives. But we can look back and we can say, thank you, Lord, yes. for your kindness, for your way of loving us, and because of how faithful you've been to us. Yes. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is the faithfulness. When God is in your history, you realize a number of things. That the bend in the road is not the end of the road. There are times the road takes some bend. But when God is in the history, the bend in the road is not the end of the road. When God is in your history, he turns your defeat into victory. When God is in your history, your losses become gains. When God is in your history, you realize that weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Yeah, when God is in your history, every sacrifice is worth it. Every pain is worth it. Every perplexity is worth it because God is going to work it out for your good. When God is in your history, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk upright. When God is in your history, sometimes you have to face the, the lions. 
And sometimes you have to face the bear. But David found out that facing the lion and facing the bear prepared him for the giant. When God is in your history, you can shout, Ebenezer. 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 Hitherto, Hitherto. 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 Lord. Let us and help us. Now, some of you have little pebbles. I got me a big stone. You see, the reason I got a big stone is because God really, really, really helped me. God has brought us a long, long way. God has caused us to come over. God has brought us. We didn't even know where God was bringing us from. When we didn't know which way to turn, whether we should turn to the west or the, or the left or the right, God brought us over. And so I looked around for a, a big one. Because I've got big thanksgiving this morning. I've got big praises in my spirit. I've got a, a big song in my heart. I'm grateful to God for what he has done in this ministry over the past 14 years. I remember 14 years ago, we had nothing. 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 My wife and I went to the bank and took every penny we had and put it in an account called New Covenant Church. And then we had persons who rallied around us, rallied around us to, to establish this ministry. When we were trying to buy this building and, and the bank was turn, turned us down five times, there are persons who stood up with us. Elder, Elder John Thomas was one of them who put his house up as collateral. Reverend Fenton and Dr. Walker said we can have some collateral to, to, to purchase this building. And I remember the struggles we had when we were trying to buy the Washington Lane property. The struggles. But my friend, today we shout Ebenezer. For hitherto hath the Lord, I said hath the Lord. It was not our minds, it was not our brilliance, it was not our ingenuity, it was the Lord. For unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. Ebenezer! I say, Ebenezer, because God has brought us this far. God has brought us this far. God has brought us this far. Ebenezer means recognizing the involvement of the Spirit of God in your history. Ebenezer means recognizing the involvement of the Spirit of God in your history. If you, if you don't recognize the involvement of the Spirit of God in your history, then you're in trouble. Because all you have is secular history. It is wonderful to know your past, but don't forget who has been in it. It is wonderful to know your history, whether it's black or blue, but don't forget that God has been God all the time. That God did not abandon us when times were hard. God didn't abandon us when things were doing, when folks were doing us bad things. If you don't recognize the Spirit of God in your history, you've missed the boat. A lot of folks, when, when we began teaching black history, a lot of folks were angry and, and got all types of anger. My friend, you can't just swallow secular history. We didn't get this far by ourselves. Ebenezer is recognizing the involvement of the Spirit of God in your history. And as we look back as a congregation, we can see the hand of God in this church from the beginning. Imagine we're sitting here looking real pretty. But when we first started the first service, we had no heat. We had gas, gas um, burners, kerosene, kerosene burners in the, in the aisle just to give us heat. Imagine 14 years later, we're moving to the campus, 38 acres and 14 buildings. <laughs> give you praise. Now let the weak say I'm strong. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you. We will go out. We'll go out in power. We'll go out in praise. We will leave this place with thanksgiving. We will go to the campus with expectancy. The Lord will perform the perfect those things which concern us. We will decree a thing and the Lord will do it. Thousands and thousands of souls will be won. They will come to the campus and find peace and joy and serenity. Families will be brought back together. The cords that are broken will vibrate again. In the name of Jesus, children will be saved and singers will be saved and husbands will be saved and fathers will be saved and wives will be saved and daughters will be saved. In the name of Jesus, we praise you, we praise you. We praise you, we praise you. Thank you, thank you. Let the rain come down. Let the Shekinah come down. Let the Shekinah come down. Let the glory come down. Let the glory, let the glory, let the glory come down. Let the glory of the Lord, let the glory of the Lord, for the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. Thank you, Jesus. Stand to your feet and magnify the Lord. Let the glory. Let the glory, let the glory, let the glory, let the glory come down. Let the glory of the Lord God, let the glory of the Lord God fill the house. Let the glory of the Lord God fill our, our hearts. Let the glory of the Lord God fill our eyes. Let the glory of the Lord God give us expectancy. For hitherto, hitherto has the Lord helped us. Thank you, Jesus. Standing at a crossroads. What do you do? Say it with me. When a fork is in the road. When the world is on your shoulders. When the world is on shoulders. What do you do? When your back is up against the wall. When your back is up against the wall. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? You hold on. You hold on. And keep the faith. You keep the faith. Tell somebody in your house, keep, keep the, faith. the faith. Come on, tell somebody sitting around you, keep the keep faith. The faith. Come on, encourage somebody. Come on, where do you look? When there's nowhere else to look. Where do you turn? When there's nowhere else to turn. Where do you go? When there's nowhere else to go, when there's nowhere else to what, do you do? what do you do? When there's nothing else to do, you got to remember, you're in the master's hand, and the master has a plan. So hold on and keep the faith. the faith. Keep 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 the faith. He has worked it out before. He has worked it out before. He can work it out again. Come on, trust God. Trust God. Come on.
Come on, say victory is mine. Victory is yours. Come on, tell somebody victory is yours. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. God's going to see you through. You're going to make it. You can do this. Come on, throw your arm around somebody and say victory is yours. God's going to see us through. Come on, say it. Tell somebody, keep the, keep the faith. Keep the faith. Come on, tell them, keep the faith. No matter what you're going through, God's got your back. Come on, throw your arms around somebody. You come too far to turn around now. Hang in there. Don't give up. Don't get weaker. Get stronger. Tell somebody. Keep the faith. God's gonna help you. You can recover. Don't get weaker. Get stronger. If God be for you, who can be against you? Is he that is in you than he that is in the world. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Good morning, New Covenant. It is truly an honor to be here with you this morning. I am just so thankful that God has blessed us with life on this Sunday morning. I'm thankful to Pastor Bob for giving me the opportunity to speak to you this morning. I'm thankful for his amazing leadership. As the pastor of New Covenant Church, I, I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that he is the man that God has called for this place at this time. As a voice to the city, as a voice to this nation and as a prophetic voice to the world. I'm honored to call him a friend. I'm honored to call him my big brother. And I'm honored to call him a mentor. And I don't take lightly the opportunity that he's given me this morning to speak to you. I would also like to take a second to thank my wife, who is not with us this morning, Chevis, and my wonderful three sons, she makes me look good. And even if I, I, I think I look good, she makes me look better. And so I'm, I'm thankful for her and the gift of God that she is in my life. Lastly, i like to give thanks Lastly, but not least, I'd like to give thanks and, and honor and glory to God, who is the author, the architect, the sculptor, the painter, the artist of my life. Uh, without him, I could do nothing. And just pray with me. Father God, I thank you. I praise you for who you are. Your word says that where two or three are gathered together in your name, then you are in the midst. So I thank you for all of those who are joined with us, whether here or online, all across the world. You are in the midst. We are in your presence. So we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your call. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you that you are you. We praise you in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now, before I continue, you might have thought I forgot a few very, very VIP people, but I did not. I like to give honor where honor is due. I like to thank my parents, especially for their presence here 
with me this morning. I'd like to acknowledge my mother, Dr. Hyacinth Bob Granham, and my father, Bishop Dr. C. Milton Granham, a.k.a. Brother Milton, a.k.a. Bishop, a.k.a. Dad, as I call him, a.k.a. Poppy, as my children call him. It's, it's, it's funny because even though I'm speaking about the same person, he goes by different names based on the, the context of the relationship that you have with him. The number of people who know him as Dr. Granham is, is, is probably countless. He's been dedicated to a life of service to Christ for nearly seven decades. Dr. Granham has preached in arenas to tens of thousands of people. Dr. Granham has, has had a radio and television ministry that's reached countless countries in the world. His books have gone far. Millions have probably been touched by his ministry. All over the world, there are people who know him by the name Dr. Granham. The number of people who've been impacted by his ministry cannot be measured. His ministry and my mother's ministry. But I also realized that there's another name that he goes by, Dad. I can count the number of people who call him Dad. It's, it's, it's five plus two. My wife and my brother's wife. We call him dad. See, see dad has a different uh, uh, meaning. Dad has a different type of power. When you call him dad, there's a different type of, of, of power because of the, the context in which I know him. See, I, I can meet Dr. Granham and, and ask him for things and ask him for, for, for stuff, but he probably won't give it to me. If I just know him as Dr. Granham, he might give me a word. He might give me wisdom. He might give me some understanding. But see, if I know him by dad, I can get all of those things and I can get some money, right? I can always ask dad for money. And, and when you ask dad for money, you have to do it a certain way. You can't ask him over the phone, right? You can ask him for anything else over the phone, but when you, when you go in to ask for money, you have to say, uh, hey, hey, Dad, uh, you think I can come over and talk to you? And then when you get over there, you have to look him face to face if you're going to ask for money, right? As an aside, uh, Dad, after the service, um, if you don't mind if I can come over and just talk to you just for a few minutes. I have something I, I, I wanted to ask you. But there's a context that changes things. Now, the context I just talked about is just the context of relationship. But this is anniversary Sunday. This is our anniversary month. And we're celebrating what is the amazing accomplishment, what is the amazing ministry of New Covenant Church of Philadelphia, of the, the, the ministry, the call, the anointing that was placed on Bishop and Dr. Hyacinth many 38 years ago. And now we're still basking, not just in the, the glory of it, but in the, the current activating uh, uh, anointing. It's still moving. See, See, I wanted to talk to you today about the, con the, the power of the context of the call. The context of the call. Context is a word, it's a noun. It means the circumstances that form the setting for an event, statement, or idea, and in terms of which it can be fully understood and assessed. So it's the circumstances surrounding that give you a greater idea of what it is that you're receiving or what you're hearing or, or, or what you're doing or, or even what you're reading. 
And the, the other definition is the parts of something written or spoken that immediately precede and follow a word or passage and clarify its meaning. The context of the call. See, many are called. Few are chosen. And I really believe that few are chosen because few truly understand the context of the call. The context of the call. If my father calls me and he and I, I don't know what the phone call is about, right? Or if anyone calls and you don't know what the phone call is about, you may or may not answer. But if you know that it's important, then you'll pick up the phone. If he were to call me and say, son, I need you to be at such and such a place at a certain time, then he's my dad, and I'm going to do it, right? But if I'm busy, then... I might say, well, you know, I have some things to do. Or if a friend calls me and says, you know, I need you to be at a certain place at a certain time. I need you to meet me somewhere. Are, are you busy? See, when people call you and ask, are you busy? That's the dead giveaway. Don't call me and ask me if I'm busy. I'm going to say, what do you want? And, and, and that, that's how my dad used to get us every Saturday morning. He would wake us up and say, what do you, what do you folks have scheduled today. Now you're talking to a two 16 year olds who have no responsibilities, no jobs. We're not going to work anywhere. And so if you say, uh, I, I don't have anything planned. Oh, wonderful. Well, 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 let me fill your day up with some activities. Let me fill your day up with some chores. I have, I have some gardening to do. I have some raking to do over here. I want you to water those plants. But had I understood what he was going to ask me, then my answer might have been different, right? So it's the context of the call. Let me give you a, an idea of, of context. Context. So my, my son and I, we were watching the message from, from two weeks ago where Bishop and, and Dr. Granham were speaking with Pastor Bob right here on this pulpit. But before the, 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 the conversation they had, there, there was a video that played. In that video was, was Bishop, and he was standing up here in this same place. But all this beautiful woodwork wasn't here. In fact, the, the, the whole building wasn't even finished being built. We had folding chairs, right? And there was, there you could still see the concrete and the wood and, and the frame, the framework in the background and the drywall, which hadn't even been painted yet. And when I looked at that video, I said, wow, my dad looks so much younger. So I called my son over. And he looked at the video. He realized that he was looking at this place here, before it was built, and his reaction was, oh, wow, Poppy really did that. Poppy really built all this. See, his context as an 11-year-old is that all this has been here. It's always been here in his mind. In the mind of my children, it's always been here. It's an ancient landmark. But for the first time, he saw before it was finished being built. And he realized that in that moment, he realized not, oh, wow, that's the campus. Oh, wow, that's the church. Oh, wow, that's the sanctuary. That wasn't his reaction. His reaction was, Oh, wow, Poppy really did this. This place that we go every Sunday morning, the thousands of people who come, 
This really started somewhere. It started in his mind. And once he got a better context, he had a better understanding of the call that was placed in his grandfather. He had a better understanding of what it, what it really took, of what he really did. He had a better understanding of why people respect him and respect my mother. His understanding grew. Oh, Poppy really did this. It's the context of the call. Sometimes we, we, we get the call and we don't understand the context. What do I mean? We, 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 I'll give you an example, case in point. I've preached in this sanctuary in settings like this where there's no one. Right now, my, my parents are here. I have an audience of, of two in my presence. But I've preached to an empty sanctuary more times than I can count. I, I've preached to an empty sanctuary more times than I've preached in the full one. Because I would come here after school every day, and I would walk through this place, and I would stand right here, and I would just begin talking. And preaching. And imagining. This place filled up. But here's the other thing about the context of the call. This place is empty right now for a reason. It's not empty just because nobody showed up. It's not empty because uh, no one wanted to be here. It's empty because not, right now we're experiencing a pandemic. And it's unsafe for us all to come into this place without putting each other at risk. So now the sanctuary is empty, right? And I'm up here preaching. And as I prepared this morning to come, I got my, my clothes together. I asked my wife if I looked nice. She said yes. And I came out here and I, I realized this morning that I was coming to preach to an almost empty building. And I had a flashback. And I talk about this vision all the time, but I always talk about it in a packed building. I always talk about it in a packed house. I had a flashback to 20 years ago. When God gave me a vision, I, 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 had a, 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 I was living a different type of lifestyle. I ended up in the hospital based on my lifestyle, right? It wasn't just because I got hurt or injured or in an accident or something. I, I, I had a reaction to some drugs that I took. And I was unconscious in an ambulance, and I ended up in the hospital. But while I was in the ambulance, I had a vision. And in this vision, I saw myself preaching. I didn't look like I did then because I was still basically a teenager. But my, my 40th birthday was a couple weeks ago. So I'm not a teenager anymore. The proof of, that I'm not a teenager is that I sneezed so hard yesterday that I threw my back out. So whenever you get to the point where you sneeze and throw your back out, that's proof that you're not as young as you used to be. But in my vision, I saw myself. I looked different because I was older. I looked more like my dad, in fact. I thought it was my father until I got right up close. But what I realized was that the sanctuary was empty. I was fully dressed. In fact, I had a robe on. And I was preaching. And the light shone, uh, uh, beamed down. And God spoke to me in that moment and told me that he was 
putting my, 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 my life on a different path. That I would never be the same anymore. That I wouldn't be able to do some of the same things that I did before. That things would be different. Things were changing. And I always wondered why the sanctuary was empty. I said, well, I don't want to have a church if there's nobody, nobody's going to be there. I can preach to myself at home. But right now I'm preaching in an empty sanctuary. And the message is reaching beyond this place. Because it's bigger than me. What I didn't understand then was the context of the call. I didn't know that I would be here 20 years later. The context of the call. See, the context has, ha, it, it, it's not just a, a, about a, a particular time, right? It's not just about this place where I am 20 years later, but it's also about the journey that got me here from that point. That's the context. The things that I had to experience over time, the context, the people that I had to meet, the ups, the downs, the disappointments, the, the successes, right? The heartbreaks, the hurts, the, the, the celebrations, everything is a part of the context of the call. For Bishop and Pastor Hyacinth, for Bishop, when he had a conversation with his pastor's wife, and she asked him about, she said, I can't wait to see you graduate from college. That changed the context of his life. It changed the context of, 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 of how he saw himself. The context of, of, of what was possible. He thought he knew what was possible. But when the word came down, the context changed. The context changed. I just, I just have three points that I want to speak to you about today. And I promise I'm not going to be long. I promise. And in the words of Kanye West, he says, if you admire somebody, you should go ahead and tell them. People never get their flowers while they can still smell them. And for you, mom and dad, I know they gave you some flowers a few weeks ago. And they'll probably show so that you can all see the flowers, the wonderful flowers. But I want today to be my flower to you. I even had a, I was trying to come up with a catchy uh, title. I was going to call it a, a letter to my father or, or dreams of my father. I, I was trying to, you know, do what Barack did with his book, Dreams to My Father. But I've always wanted to have an opportunity to just share my heart with my father. The calling is given within a context. It's given within a context. It's funny because I, I, as I was talking about that um, the vision I had and I saw myself up in the road, it reminded me of a time that I, I, I showed my boys a picture of my dad and he had a, a nice robe on and it was, had, had gold, black. It looked royal. It looked very... Uh, if you could get closer to God, you probably wouldn't be able to if you didn't have that robe on. That's how good it looked. But I showed my kids and I said, look, look at, look at Poppy. Look at this picture. And my youngest, he looked at the picture and he saw the robe and he looked. He said, is, is Poppy a wizard? <laughs> because in his context, Wizards wear robes. 
I know you've all seen uh, what's 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 the movie um the uh, uh with, with with Gandalf and the the Harry Potter movies and the uh all, all the movies with the wizards wear the robes and so in his context, Poppy was a wizard because he wore a robe. I know some bishops wear the wear the hat. You know, I was thinking that uh. Preaching is one of those uh, uh, professions where you have liberty to dress really however you want. You can't dress like a preacher anywhere else. It's not, it's not even one set uniform, right? Preachers wear robes and they, they, they wear uh, colorful outfits and, and suits. It's just an amazing thing to me. I was thinking about it because I, I, I wanted to be a comedian, and I was thinking, like, oh, these comedians, they dress crazy. But, you know, preachers do too. So we're talking about the context. The first point that I want to make to you is that God's call is given within a context. This, this context that we're living in today is something that I wouldn't have, been, have imagined a year ago. We're living in a pandemic. The church is empty for a reason. But we just had an election, right? And we've had a, a, a president who's, who's been elected, a president-elect, and we have a, a president who won't concede and who's planning for his second term, even though another president has been elected. The country is divided, split right down the middle. I've never seen it more divided in my lifetime. But I'm only 40 years old. But it's been more divided before. We've had a civil war in the past, right? The country's been divided before. But this is something that is new to me. It's a different context. But this is the thing about the call. See, God doesn't call and establish things for no reason. He calls and establishes for a reason. The, the, the historical context refers to the social, religious, economic, political conditions that exist during a certain time and place. And in analyzing historical events, context can help us to understand what motivates people to behave the way that they do at a certain time. So if you want to know why people are acting crazy right now, it's, you have to understand the context. The context will, t context will tell you. But I also know that God moves to solve problems. Right? So 38 years ago, when God gave the vision to Bishop and, Pastor and Dr. Hyacinth to start New Covenant, when we had the first service, a word came forth. And that word is found in Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, verse 19, it says, Behold, I am about to do something new. Even now it is coming. Do you not see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. And that was the message that my godfather, Apostle Abraham Fenton, preached that first service. Behold, I will do something new. But if you look at the verses before that, in verse 16, it says, Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea and a path through surging waters, who brings out the chariots and horses, the armies and warriors together to lie down, never to rise again, to be extinguished, snuffed out like a wick, and then it says, do not call to mind the former things. 
pay no attention to the things of old. Behold, I'm about to do something new. Even now it is coming. Do you not see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I provide water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people. The people I formed for myself will declare my praise. We're talking about water in the wilderness, streams in the desert. I will do a new thing because there's a need that needs to be met. And if you look around, I had to stop watching CNN because it, it's overwhelming watching the news today because all I see is the, the need that needs to be met. But until I began working on this, I, I, this message, I, I didn't see the context. I didn't see the opportunity. In a world that's divided, only God can bring it together. In a country that's separated, where children are being kicked out of their homes for voting for the person who, who their parents didn't vote for, only God can bring that together. We have to look at the context. When people are dying and people can't come together and people are depressed because they can't leave the house, that's when they need a word from the Lord. That's when they need encouragement from God. So much is happening. And instead of looking down and saying it's crazy out there, we can look out and say there's crazy opportunity for God to do something amazing, for God to do something miraculous, for God to change this whole thing around. They say this is the time that marriages are suffering the most because people are forced to come together more than they're used to. In times like these, we can show people how to love each other the way Christ loved the church. We can give wisdom from the word on how to, to bring relationships together. When people aren't able to make money, we can bring wisdom from the word on how to become stewards with the resources that God has given us. We have to fully understand that God's call is given within a context. They didn't know 38 years ago that they would be sitting watching me in an empty, empty sanctuary, watching their son preach because I was two years old at the time. They didn't know that people who they've, they've seen born would be running things behind the scene right now. People whose parents they married We'll be making sure that everything is running smoothly. They didn't know 38 years ago because God doesn't always give us the full context. But what we can rely on is that God is the one who's speaking. And so his context is perfect. God's call is given within a context. Point one. Point number two is that the context is fully understood by the one who calls. In the book of Jeremiah, verse 1, chapter 4, chapter, chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, says, Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you, and I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. Before you were born, I knew you. Be, not just before you were born, before I even 
formed you in the womb. I knew you. And before you were born, I, I, I consecrated you. And I called you before you were born. This is the one who called, understood the full context. Jeremiah might have not understood the context fully. Bishop might not have understood the context fully. I may not have understood the context fully. Pastor Bob might not have understood the context fully, but before we were formed in the womb, God knew us, and he had a full understanding of the call. He had a full understanding of the context. Before I formed you, I knew you. Before I formed you, I knew you. I, I, like I said, I, I, I'm taking this opportunity to share with my father Some things that are on my heart. And you all have, have access to this conversation. Because I feel that it needs to be public. But in, in life, I believe that relationships go through ups and downs, right? Any relationship you have will go through ups and downs. Doesn't matter if, if it's your, uh, your, your parent, your spouse, your children. You're going to go through ups and downs, right? And at a certain point, I, I, I realized that I, I saw my dad as a, as a super human, right? Uh, almost growing up, it's almost like my son, when he, when he saw the context of everything, when he, when he's, the context in which he was raised in, everything was stable, everything was here, Right? But for me, my father has always been an achiever, so I didn't think it strange. I thought it was easy for him, right? I thought the, 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 the hours that he put in was easy. I thought that the thousands of people who came, that that was easy for him, right? I thought that the, the wisdom that he gave was easy. But I've realized over time in visiting other churches and, and spending time away from this place, that it wasn't superhuman strength that allowed him to achieve what he achieved in founding New Covenant. And in, 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 in allowing God to bring it to what it has become. It wasn't super strength. It wasn't the fact that he was superhuman. What I realized was that it took consistency. It took hard work. Maybe at a superhuman level, but at a level that is achievable if you do the work, if you put the hours in, if you dedicate your life to it. What I realized was that what he did took tremendous sacrifice. It wasn't a superhuman thing. And so, in my early 20s, I was working here as the, the youth pastor. I was the youth pastor for several years, right? And, and all of the things that I just mentioned, the persistence, the consistency, the dedication, that came as a result of the context of his journey. Following God was his, his only way out. Answering the call was his only way out. Talking about abject poverty. He wasn't supposed to make it out. He wasn't supposed to be here. His name's not supposed to be on the building. He beat all the odds. 
by answering the call. And in answering the call and in having a context of decades of understanding God's word, understanding how God calls, understanding how God speaks, understanding what it takes, understanding what's needed, realizing that you, you gain as you go. It's not given to you. It's not like something that is deposited in your bank account. The wisdom doesn't come overnight. The experience doesn't come overnight. You gain as you go. And as, as I remember being a, a youth minister, and I was a youth minister for a number of years, maybe five, six years, I, I can't remember. But at some point, I was let go. And my dad fired me. And I was angry for a long time. For over a decade, I was angry and I had unforgiveness in my heart because I lacked the perspective to understand the context. But over this last year, the last few years, something, I, I, I began to, to forgive, I, I began to be able to forgive my dad, right? Over the last few years. But this last year, something happened where I realized that I shouldn't have been forgiving him for, for, for letting me go because the words he said to me was, I think you should find a place where you can spread your wings. It, it's the context of the call. See, sometimes when you're so angry, you don't hear what is said. You just see the act. And you don't hear the words that come along with it. And I began to internalize what he said to me this year. And we've had some conversations. We've walked the campus. And, you know, he shared about his childhood and, and his upbringing. And it's given me a better understanding, right? But what I realized was that I shouldn't have been forgiving him or, 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 or felt the need to have to forgive him for letting me go. I should have been thanking him for pushing me out. Because there's a difference. Because when a mother eagle wants her, her, her baby bird to fly, she doesn't say whenever you're ready. But what happens is mama comes up and she says, okay, you're ready. And she pushes them out of the nest and they're forced to fly. And what I didn't realize was that there was the context of the one who calls. There's a context for the one who gives the direction. When God calls us, his context is all-knowing. He, he knows all. He sees all. He sees what you're going to do. He sees what, what you're capable of. He sees what's going to happen after you. We have to understand the context, that the context is fully understood by the one who calls. Before I formed you, I knew you. When I pushed you out, I knew you were capable, but I knew you had to learn how to spread your wings. They were the literal exact words that he said. I need you to find, I need you to go and find a place where you can spread your wings and learn how to fly. And because I didn't understand the context, I missed the call. Misunderstanding the context will have you misunderstanding the call. Many are called, but few are chosen. So point number one is that 
God's call is given within a context. Number two is that the context is fully understood by the one who calls. And number three is that the context of God's call extends far beyond the one who is called. In Hebrews 7, verse 9 and 10, the writer says, One might even say that Levi himself, who received tithes, paid tithes through Abraham. For he was still in the loins of his ancestor when, Mel when Melchizedek met him. His tithe was paid while he was still in the loins of his, of his great-grandfather. See, my great-grandfather, his name was uh, Luke Williams. Uh, I don't know too much about him. I know he had a donkey. And my aunt said that might have been like the Cadillac of that day, right? And his son was Clarence Williams. And his son was Clarence Milton Granham. And his son stands before you today. But what the word is saying is that the seed was in him. But what that shows me was that the seed that was placed in Bishop and the seed that is placed in New Covenant Church will go far reaching beyond what he ever thought. When he's gone, the call will still be here. When I'm gone, and Pastor Bob is gone, and my children are gone, the call will still be here. We look at this campus, and everyone who I, who, who I meet, who, who, who knows about the campus, they, it, it's, it's an amazing place. They say, whoever got this campus had amazing vision. It took vision to get a place like this, right? And I know that the anointing is not in the building, but the anointing is in the call. Because this was the vision that God gave Bishop decades ago. In fact, before he moved to the campus, he showed me a piece of paper years before he moved. And it was something that he wrote down in the 60s. It was the vision that God gave him. And then that vision was a, a square block, a square city block. And buildings and schools and sanctuary and nursing homes. And we had all those things in this place. Plus more. On a space larger than the space of a city block. It's almost like, I, I think of it like uh, the call is like, Passive income, right? Still making money while you sleep. Because when I was a youth minister, I remember that I got a phone call by somebody who went to school on this campus. She didn't know me. She didn't know about the church other than the fact that her school was located on a church campus. And she was experiencing a problem. She was a teenager and she was pregnant and she didn't know what to do. And so she knew that there was a church here. So she called the office and asked to speak to somebody. And because I was a youth minister, she spoke to me. She didn't know my name. She just knew that the campus was here. And that a church owned this campus. And that somebody at this church will be able to help her. So she called me. She said she was on her way to the abortion clinic and something just said, call that, that church. Just talk to somebody there. And I spoke to her. And I spoke her. I, I talked her out of aborting her child. I didn't know her from a can of paint. But years later, she called me up. 
She found me on, on social media and sent me pictures of her son. And every now and again, she'll send me pictures of her son and the progress that he's making. And now I'm friends with her on social media so I can see it all the time. His life is a direct result of the call that they responded to 38 years ago. His life right now. Bishop didn't, make, didn't have the conversation. Dr. Hyacinth didn't have the conversation. They probably didn't even know about it. But the call, the anointing continues far beyond. It extends far beyond the one who's called. They don't know how many lives have been saved, how many lives have been changed, how many pastors have been raised out of this congregation who've raised up more pastors, who've changed the world. In fact, those pastors probably don't even know the genesis of the, of the inspiration that they receive. They'll never know that one day somebody met a man named Bishop Granham or, or, or a woman, Dr. Hyacinth, who changed someone's life, who in turn changed theirs. They'll never know. The context is greater than anything we can imagine. Anything that we can imagine. In fact, my mom is one of the most influential people in my life. She probably has, she's probably, she might be one of the most influential people in this city and doesn't even know it because she's taught so many people lessons, whether they've asked for them or not. They've got the lesson. In fact, my, my, my son was looking at the video uh, that was shown a couple weeks ago or, or last week, and he saw my mom speaking. And she might have been 20, 30 years younger. And she had on a, a white dress and white pearls. And Ari, the, the five-year-old, he says, is that Manji? He, I said, who's that? He said, I don't know. I said, that's Manji. He said, was she the president? Was she the president? I said, no. She wasn't the president. I said, well, she sounds like the president. And there was so much authority so much understanding, so much elegance in her voice that it's, it's, it's no wonder why God told them to do this thing together. It wasn't a, a, a situation like, like Scarface when he's at the table at the restaurant and he's like, who put this thing together? Me. Guess who? Who do I trust? Me. It wasn't a one-man job. It wasn't a one-man operation. It was a team. I saw my parents operating as a team. God called the two of them. But the context of that call, the life of that call, will continue forever. But they had to be faithful they had to be faithful to respond to the call. They had to be diligent to respond to the call. It goes far, extends far beyond the one who's called. And my last part, and the last point that I want to make is that the vision continues. It's very simple. The calling continues. The calling continues. It won't end with them. It won't, it won't end with me. It won't end with Pastor Bob. And I, I see my parents 
and they're, they're getting a little bit older. And I know when you, when you, as you age, you start to look back and, and, and wonder about things. You start to worry about, well, not worry, but you start to, to think about the future of the things that you've built. I want to speak to them today to let them know and to let you all know, New Covenant, that what they've built will extend and continue. The calling will continue. There's some dreams and visions that they've had that they may not have felt like they saw fulfilled. But that's what happens when you have a big vision. Because there are people I know who would die for a fraction of what God gave them. But even still, Habakkuk 2 says, For the vision awaits an appointed time. It, it awaits a context. It testifies at the end. And it will not lie. And though it lingers, wait for it since it will surely come and not delay. It will speak. It will speak. New Covenant, 38 years ago, Dr. Granham and Bishop Granham responded to the call of God. And it shall continue to speak, and it will not lie. I just want to thank you all so much for joining us this Sunday morning. If, if you have prayer requests, I'd like you to send them to prayer at newcovenantchurch.org. And before you go and turn off your screens and do whatever you're going to do for the rest of your day, I just want to pray with you right now. So if you can look to the Lord with me. Father God, I thank you. I praise you for who you are. You know who every person watching is. You know their lives. You know their hurts. You know their pains. You also know their, their, their potential. You know their call. You know how you've called them. And you know the context of their call. And Father God, I pray that you would just encourage them. Give them understanding. Give them wisdom to, to, to follow through with what you have said and what you have spoken concerning them. We believe that there's going to be a great revival in Philadelphia and the United States in this church, Father God. And we believe that they are a, an, an integral part of that. We pray, Father God, that you would just raise them from where they are now Give them a context that they would be able to, to do what you have called them to do in the new way. Give them courage. Give them faith. Give them strength. Give them motivation. Give them consistency. Give them persistence to, to follow through with what you've called them to be, knowing that it extends far beyond anything that they can think or imagine. For this is an eternal call. And you've given us the context. We thank you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you for joining the New Covenant Church of Philadelphia. We pray that the word of God has enriched your life through our ministry. To give your tithes and offerings or to sow a gift of love to the ministry, you can do so by visiting the website, texting to give, or mailing in your donation. The options are on the screen. Oh, 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 oh,